We hear about how the Aurans have gone beyond delight, and it sounds gray, dull, unattractive. But we have to understand what delight means. It's the mind's tendency to dress up its pleasures, to make them more than they actually are, so that we go back to them again and again and again. It's very closely related to the allure of our defilements. You think about food, and you can think about it in a way that it's really attractive. You look forward to the meal every day. But then you think about it, the food tastes good. It looks good only when it's on the plate. Once it goes in your mouth, you wouldn't want to look at it again. It tastes good only in the mouth. Then once it goes down the throat, you wouldn't want to have it come back up. You think about the process of digestion and the fact that your body can't absorb things from the food when it is good looking and tasty. You have to wait until it's pretty disgusting and then it absorbs. The more you think about it, the more you realize it's, it's a very unattractive process. And that's not even thinking about the suffering that goes into those who provide the food. If you're not a vegetarian, the, the animals that are given their lives. If you are a vegetarian, the farmers, the farm, farm workers, the people in the distribution network. There's a lot of suffering that goes along with it. And so we like to dress it up. You can see this clearly in the different, different foods that different societies have. There was a dish that they like in Greenland, where they take the intestines of a, of a seal and they stuff it with seal parts, and then they let it ferment, and they eat it raw. And they've learned how to delight in that. So think about that. There are a lot of foods that we have here in the West that other people would find pretty disgusting, and we've learned how to delight in them. And of course, the devas don't delight in human food anywhere. From them, it's pretty smelly. One of the reasons why, when we first started out here, no matter how cold it was outside, after the meal at John Swat would say, okay, open up all the doors, get rid of the smell of the food. so that the devas wouldn't be offended. So everywhere you look, the human pleasures have to be dressed up. And the question is, what are you dressing up and what does it lead you to do? Because there are a lot of pleasures that you dress them up and then you want to get them again. And you have to do things that are against the precepts, things that are against principles of being a noble human being, to get those pleasures. Here again, you dress them up. Lust is the big delighter. Because when you actually think about the body, and this is one of the reasons why we do body contemplation, is to realize that it, if you don't look at the body with lots of blinders on, if you look at it actually for what you can't. It's not all that attractive, and yet we want it to be attractive. And so we focus on certain details and ignore other details that are right next to the details that we like, just millimeters away. And we don't like being reminded of the fact that there are these other unattractive features to the body. So this is delight, this is allure. The mind is basically lying to itself. As for the Arahants, having gained Nirvana, there's nothing they have to delight in. They don't need to add anything to what they've already got, because it's perfectly sufficient. It's totally satisfactory. So even commenting on it doesn't increase the, the joy, it doesn't increase the well-being of Nirvana. 
That's why they're beyond delight. They don't have to dress things up. They don't have to lie to themselves. Now to get there, though, we have to delight in the path. So it requires changing your internal dialogue. So you can talk about the breath being interesting. And in many ways, the breath in and of itself is not interesting, but the fact that the way you focus on it will change it. The perceptions you have about it will change how you feel it. And the different ways of breathing that can get past different kinds of diseases, different kinds of pains in the body. That is fascinating. It gives you a sense that the Buddha was right when he said, all things have the mind as their forerunner. You begin to see the influence that the mind has on basic experiences, just of the body, as you feel it from within. There's a lot to explore there, in terms of your perceptions, in terms of your inner conversation. And you want to learn to delight in that. That gives you some pull away from your unskillful mental habits. And gives you some more and more reasons to want to say no to them. Now in the beginning, you're dealing with mindfulness, basically saying no, and doing your best to resist the pull. As the Buddha said, mindfulness is like a dam. It holds the flood back, but it doesn't solve the problem of the flood, because after all, dams can get flooded. They get washed away when the current is really strong. But at the very least, they give you some reprieve. They still the water a bit, slow the water down, so you can see more clearly what exactly is going on. To see you know, where things originate, where things pass away, and what the allure is. Now often it's what you've added to it that makes it so compelling. So you have to ask, ask yourself, why am I lying to myself? And the answer usually is, well, I got some pleasure out of this someplace in the past, and I don't see anything better than this, so I might as well learn how to make it more than it is. You know, and you've got the path here. You learn how to develop some of the skills and get some mastery over the, the skills. You can learn how to delight in that. Delight in the idea of freedom. Delight in the idea of not being a slave to your defilements. Because they make you think it's pretty attractive, that you're pretty smart to go along with them. They tell you that you get what you want. Lust gets you what you want. Anger gets you what you want. That's what they tell you. I mean, the tricks of advertisers outside are nothing compared to the tricks of the mind. Of course, a lot of the techniques of advertisers come from observing the mind and how it lies to itself. So you remind yourself, okay, what you picked up as you've been going through your various lifetimes in terms of delighting in this, delighting in that, the things you, you've you gained in the past and you miss them now, you want them back, without stopping to think, well, if I get them back, I'm going to lose them again and miss them again. You've got to learn to realize there are better things. This is why when the Buddha taught the Four Noble Truths, there are four, it's not just one Noble Truth. It wasn't just that life is suffering. Life has suffering, but life also has the cause of suffering, and it also has the cessation of suffering. And there's something you can do to get there. So you want to keep that possibility in mind. That helps to teach you to delight in what you're doing, even on days when it doesn't seem very delightful. But it gives you the strength to stick with it. the confidence that you're heading in the right direction. At the very least, you're not going in the wrong direction. There's that 
story in the canon. The monk is in the forest. His meditation is not going well. And one night he hears the villagers off in the distance having a festival. He feels pretty miserable. He said, at least they know how to have fun. They know how to have a good time. Here I am sitting in, in this hut all alone, miserable. A deva appears to him and says, do you realize how many beings there are who envy you? All those beings that are going to hell. They wish they had the opportunity to come back again and, have the, and make a better use of their lives, train their minds. So you're headed in the right direction. So learn how to delight in that, in your mind, which is so good at advertising greed, aversion, and delusion. Get it to advertise the path to itself, how good it is that you can wake up early in the morning and have nothing else to do but sit and meditate. Think of all the people in the world that don't have that opportunity. Think of the fact that, at the very least, even when your mind seems pretty recalcitrant and you look around and you can't find any pleasure in the breath at all. At least you're not harming anybody. There's so many people out there who are doing harm. So learn to appreciate the path, delight in the path. Learn to see that the path has an allure. So eventually you have to see through the allure of the path in order to get beyond it. But learn how to give it some allure to begin with. And if it seems artificial to be talking to yourself that way, well, remember that's pretty artificial to like greed and to like aversion. That was something you made up. You maintain it by lying to yourself. Here you can tell yourself some truth, even though it seems that you're not quite familiar with it yet. But you should be confident that people have tread this path before. As I say, it's only people who are true who can know the truth of this path. The Dharma is that special. So as you're making yourself worthy of that path, Learn to appreciate the fact that you're headed in the right direction. And then as the path becomes more alluring, and you can look back at the other habits that you've had in the past, and you'll be more willing to see through the, their allure. The reason why we delight in them is because we don't see anything better. But now you've got something better that you can focus on, that you can aim at. So look at the way you advertise the different pleasures in your life. And ask yourself, would the Buddha have been fooled by those advertisements? I doubt it. Then why do you let yourself get fooled? Why can't you see through them? And part of the minority has seen through them, but it, it has to deal with all the, those other voices that want to hold on because they don't see anything better. But you have to keep reminding yourself, there is better. And let that thought see you through. <laughs>